Today we are talking about reverse proxies, a key player in modern web architecture. If you ever wondered how major websites handle millions of user requests while staying fast and secure, reverse proxies are likely running behind the scenes. In this video, we'll explore what a reverse proxy is, how it works, where it's used, and the popular tools you should know about. So let's dive in. A reverse proxy is a server or software that sits between clients and backend servers, intercepting client requests and forwarding them to the appropriate backend server. So when a request comes in, the reverse proxy figures out which server should handle it, forwards the request and sends the response back to the user, all without the user ever knowing what's happening behind the scenes. A reverse proxy plays several critical roles in managing web traffic effectively. It forwards incoming requests from clients to backend servers while keeping server details like IP addresses and ports hidden, enhancing the security. It also balances the load by distributing traffic across multiple servers, ensuring scalability and reliability. And by handling SSL TLS termination, it offloads encryption tasks from backend servers, improving performance. Additionally, it caches frequently requested data, speeding up response while reducing backend workload. And lastly, it can modify requests and responses, adjusting headers, URLs, or request bodies to ensure seamless compatibility with backend services. This combination of features makes reverse proxies essential in modern web architecture. Let's look at a few examples. Nginx is a popular web server and reverse proxy for handling high traffic websites. It can act both as a web server and a reverse proxy, managing millions of requests with ease. HAProxy is known for its speed and reliability. It's often used in enterprise environments where uptime is critical. And so, it is often used in financial or enterprise grade applications. API gateways like AWS API Gateway, Apigee, or Kong, these tools do more than managing APIs. They also work as reverse proxies, adding features like authentication, rate limiting, and traffic routing. Load balancers like AWS ALB or NLB, they aren't just for balancing traffic. They also route requests to backend servers while running health checks to ensure that only healthy servers receive traffic. And by the way, I have previously made detailed videos on API gateways and load balancers, explaining their roles from scratch with clear real-world examples. If these terms sound new or a bit confusing, I highly recommend checking out those videos to build a solid foundation before diving deeper into reverse proxies. So here is how a typical request flows in a modern system. A client sends a request and say Nginx acts as a reverse proxy, which is the first layer to handle the incoming traffic. It also handles SSL termination and sending the request to an API gateway. The API gateway processes tasks like authentication or request filtering and passes the request to a load balancer. The load balancer routes traffic to the right backend servers based on availability and performance. Netflix's streaming architecture is an exceptionally large scale distributed system that needs to handle massive volumes of traffic from all over the world. Given their global user base and vast content library, they rely on sophisticated network infrastructure to ensure reliability, high performance, and seamless user experience. Although Netflix employs multiple architectural patterns and technologies, the concept of reverse proxy is fundamental in several areas. Netflix's initial and well-known approach to routing traffic from clients to backend microservices involved a tool called Zool, which was an open source gateway service acting as a reverse proxy. So when you open the Netflix application on your phone, TV, or laptop and request a show, the request doesn't directly hit a microservice deep inside the Netflix ecosystem. Instead, it goes to the edge, a set of services that form a perimeter around the internal architecture. Zool, both version v1 and v2, served as a reverse proxy, routing and filtering all incoming traffic. It was placed at the edge of Netflix's cloud infrastructure, effectively operating as the front door to Netflix's internal services. The setup allowed Netflix to manage cross-cutting concerns like authentication, rate limiting, and dynamic routing at a single entry point. Now, although Netflix has evolved its architecture over time and now utilizes other components like Spring Cloud Gateway or proprietary solutions, the underlying principle remains the same. Client requests come into a reverse proxy or a gateway layer before reaching the microservices. This provides a degree of flexibility and control over traffic flow enabling Netflix to gracefully handle issues in downstream services and perform canary deployments or AV tests with ease. Netflix also leverages global load balancing and traffic management systems to ensure optimal path selection and failover across multiple regions. A reverse proxy layer or a gateway service enable Netflix to both route traffic based on geography and also handle failovers and latency-based routing. So if a backend service is experiencing problems, 
traffic can dynamically redirect it to healthier region or service instance via the reverse proxy setup. And finally, inside Netflix's architecture, many internal requests are routed through service discovery mechanisms and load balances at the microservices level. The general principle of a reverse proxy-like component that abstracts service endpoints and handles routing is present. By doing so, Netflix engineers can swap out backend services, perform canary releases, and roll out new features without changing the client's understanding of where those services live. Now, I have also made a detailed video on service mesh architecture where I explain this concept with real-world examples, including how top tech companies leverage it for scalability and resilience. Be sure to check it out if you are curious about how microservices communicate effectively at scale. Now, if our proxy is the opposite of reverse proxy, it sits between client and the internet, intercepting outbound requests from the client to external servers. Forward proxies are typically used for clients to manage and control their access to the internet or other external networks. So, forward proxies manage outbound traffic by controlling access, ensuring privacy and optimizing bandwidth. They restrict content in schools and organizations. They hide client IPs for anonymous browsing. Even web browsers like Chrome support proxy configurations to manage outgoing internet traffic. In summary, a reverse proxy acts on behalf of servers, reversing the role of a forward proxy, which works for clients. While a forward proxy forwards client requests to external servers, a reverse proxy handles incoming client requests, directing them to internal servers.